Welcome back to Bargaining 101. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on the Rubenstein Convergence Proof. Essentially, what we'll be doing here today is looking at how the finite game with alternating offers starts to become identical to the Rubenstein bargaining game with infinitely many offers. And this combines materials from chapters 9 and 10 from Game Theory 101 Bargaining. Check the video description for more information on that. Now, if we remember back to last lecture, we were looking at the outcome of the Rubenstein bargaining model. And when the players are playing optimally, Albert's share is 1 over 1 plus delta, and Barbara's share is delta over 1 plus delta. Now what we want to do is compare this to what happens in a finite game with arbitrarily many offers. Well, if we remember back to a few lectures ago, you'll remember that the finite game's outcome has Albert's payoff and Barbara's payoffs uh, both oscillating back and forth. So we see that with Albert here, with one period, he gets a payoff of one. With two periods, he gets a payoff of one minus delta. With three periods, he gets a payoff of one minus delta plus delta squared, and so forth. So this is with six periods, you get one minus delta plus delta squared minus delta cubed plus delta to the fourth minus delta to the fifth. And if you keep adding more and more periods, it's going to keep oscillating back and forth. Similar story for Barbara down there. So we actually know what happens when we have an arbitrarily large number of periods. Still a finite number of periods, but an arbitrarily large number of periods. And all you're doing here is you're just increasing the exponents one at a time and oscillating back and forth between whether you're adding that or subtracting it from the payoff. So what would be nice to do is figure out if there's a way that we can look at what happens as this becomes closer and closer to infinitely many periods, as you extend the finite game to longer and longer and longer numbers of periods. And in fact, we can. And this is a bit of a mathematical trick, but the series of numbers that you see, both for Albert's payoff and for Barbara's payoff, has a fancy mathematical term. We call it a geometric series. And the sum of a geometric series as the number of periods in the series becomes arbitrarily large is equal to what you see on your screen now. So if we keep extending out those payoffs for Albert and Barbara, Albert's payoff is going to start becoming closer and closer to 1 over 1 plus delta. And Barbara's payoff is going to start becoming closer and closer to delta over 1 plus delta. And if you think back to just two slides ago, we know that these are identical to the payoffs for the Rubenstein bargaining game. What this is saying is that the alternating offers bargaining game with a finite number of periods, as you keep adding more and more periods, which makes it look closer and closer to the Rubenstein game, it is essentially becoming the Rubenstein bargaining game. These things are essentially the same. Now, you might be asking to yourself, hey, Will, that's cool, that's great, but isn't that obvious? Why are you even bothering telling me this? Well, actually, it's very surprising that this is true. If you've taken a little bit of game theory, and it doesn't really require too much game theory, maybe if you've only taken like half of a semester, you're probably familiar with repeated games to some degree. So if you've seen The Prisoner's Dilemma as a repeated game, what we get with a finite number of periods in that repeated game is exactly one solution, no matter how many different periods we have. You can have an arbitrarily large number of periods, you could have a trillion periods, and it's still the exact same outcome. In every single stage, the prisoners defect on each other, they take the non-cooperative action. And this is not the case as soon as you extend it to an infinite horizon game. Once you have an infinitely repeated prisoner's dilemma, then we start seeing all sorts of other strategies becoming possible in the infinite game that were not possible in the finite game. So you can think about this in terms of Grim Trigger or Tit for Tat, Tit for Tat being made popular by the book The Evolution of Cooperation by Robert Axelrod. And in fact, there is a well-known finding in game theory that basically says in a lot of these infinite horizon games, you can create strategies and make them mutually justifiable for whatever strategy you want to come up with. Basically, the folk theorem, as it's known, says that any outcome you can think of is possible to sustain in an infinitely repeated game. This is very much different than what we saw 
in the bargaining game where we had alternating offers with a finite number of periods and with an infinite number of periods. These things are exactly identical, and as it turns out, this is very rare to see in game theory. We usually think of Infinite Horizon games as having a whole bunch of different outcomes that are possible, but instead, no. In this game, in the Rubenstein game, it matches identically to what happens when we extend the number of periods from a finite game to an arbitrarily large number of periods. So that is why this is an interesting result, and it's also reassuring to know that the Rubenstein game is in fact identical to the finite game that we were looking at previously. So that wraps up this lecture, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.